Let's take a closer look at a topic you hear very often in F1. Cars show different behavior in low and high speed corners. But what does that mean? What is a high and what is a low speed corner? And why do cars behave differently in them? First of all, roughly speaking, a low speed corner is up to 100 km per hour. A high speed corner is above 200 km per hour. Everything in between is a medium speed corner. This is especially important for cars with lots of downforce, because at double the speed they produce four times the downforce. So the higher the speed, the more force is pushing the car on the ground. At low speed corners in return, there is a lot less vertical force. So to get quickly out of a tight corner, you have to have mechanical traction. If we look at this in a simplified sketch, you can see the line through a corner with little to no slip angle at the tires. Tires always need a slip angle to build a side force. If we look at this case aerodynamically, we see that the air is flowing across the car in a curve. The effect is now that the front wing is approached from the side in a tight angle. So front wing performance is compromised, so it produces less downforce. Another key area is the front wheel wake. Because of the curved domain, the wake of the inner wheel is now flowing across the car, reaching far more to the middle and hitting the rear wing from the inner side. But not just the rear wing, also beam wing and rear barrel area below. If these downforce producing devices are compromised, we get less vertical force in low speed corners. And although overall downforce is low at lower speeds anyway, every little helps to be quicker and to keep the tires alive. In high speed corners, it's a different case. The forces are a lot higher, slip angles are different, and because of that, the approaching angles of the air are different as well. So the front wing gets flow from a straighter angle, and the front tire wake is flowing out and in again at the back. So the risk at the back of the car is that it could be hit by the outside tire wake now instead of the inner one, like at low speed corners. So the case is a very different one. The task for the teams now is to decide which corner type they want to focus on. Usually the Aero Performance Group is analyzing the tracks in the calendar and filters out which corner type would be most beneficial to focus the development on. And so some teams focus on low speed corners while others focus on high speed corners. Pretty often teams will simply react to what their car does on the track. You cannot always simulate everything perfectly and so the car can still behave differently on a real racetrack than what you expected. After the first tests, teams concentrate on fixing the weaknesses of their car. And of course, the best case scenario is that your car is good in every corner type, so you never lose too much to the competition and you can be fastest overall. So all these little veins and devices are based on development with a certain focus on a certain corner type. And it depends on the team and their development direction to adapt the behavior of the car to all kinds of corners. So I hope you liked this little insight and if you want to work in F1 as well, check out my online courses and lectures with the links below which prepare you for a career in F1 and leave your thoughts in the comments below. See you at the next video.